If you paid just $100 extra towards your student loans every month, you could save up to $3,000 or more in interest and get out of debt three years faster. So instead of asking yourself $2 questions, like whether or not to add guacamole to your order at Chipotle, or whether to switch from a savings account that pays like 1.5% to another one that pays 1.4%, Start asking yourself $3,000 questions that will actually help you get out of debt faster. If there's just one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's this. If you just shift your focus and start making some small changes in your finances, you can become debt free a lot sooner than you think. I mean, never in a million years that I think I could do it in just six years. So I want to share with you the story of how I paid off $100,000 in six years and also how you can do it too. I'm going to share with you all about the journey of how I first got into debt and then got out of it. And more importantly, I'll also show you how you can drastically speed up the time it takes for you to pay off your student loans as well. Because the sooner you do that, the sooner you'll be free to put that money towards more fun things like investing for your future, traveling the world, and making the most of this one amazing life that we've all been given. Due to the fact that I have a YouTube channel about personal finance, it might seem like I've always had a really good handle on my money, but the truth is my finances were actually a hot mess for a good portion of my life. So as a teenager, I was pretty good with my money in the sense that I had a part-time job, I saved up for my own car and paid for most of my own bills other than food and rent since I lived with my parents. But when I got into NYU and moved to New York City for college, that was just a whole new level of financial responsibility that I was just not ready for. To pay for school, I started signing student loans of about $15,000 every semester because NYU tuition is expensive. And I kind of knew that this was money that I'd have to pay back one day, but I didn't really like understand the connection. I just never really thought through how X amount of debt translates into X amount of monthly payments once you graduate. I mean, all the adults I talked to in my family, they seem to pretty much have the consensus that a degree from a prestigious college was the most important thing in life and worth at all costs to get. So I just never questioned it. So that's the thing about debt. It feels like free money. And so it's very easy to get into debt, especially if it's student loans. So it's something that you can justify, but inevitably you end up having to reduce your lifestyle in the future in order to pay for it. So it always catches up to you. So exactly how much the debt you take on today and how that will impact your lifestyle in the future. That's the part that's hard to wrap your head around. So when I graduated, a couple years later, I started getting emails about student loan repayment. And that's when I realized after one extremely stressful phone call that my monthly student loan payment was going to be around $1,200 a month. All I can say is I really wish someone had actually sat me down in college before I took on all those loans to tell me that like, Hey, look for every $10,000 you borrow, that's going to translate to X amount in monthly payments. So, you know, are you okay with that? I think if I just done that, I probably would have thought twice about just borrowing money for school, which quite honestly is the easy way out. I think if I looked harder, there were probably scholarships I could have applied for and things like that. So I actually remember filling out an application for a scholarship one time, but I forgot to turn it in before the deadline. So I missed out on what potentially could have been like a $20,000 scholarship. So definitely there are other ways to pay for school that don't involve getting into debt. But anyway, since I'd gotten myself into that situation, I couldn't afford to pay $1,200 a month of my monthly payments. So what I did was I consolidated that and then I went on an interest only plan. On the interest only plan, I was paying only $261 a month. And I know it's not exactly a smart move, but for the first two years, that's what I could handle. And I really didn't make any headway paying down my student loans for those first two years because it was interest only, which means my debt free journey didn't actually start until I was 25. Age 25 is when I got sick and tired of just being in debt and carrying all that financial baggage, mental and emotional baggage. So that's when I started really going for it. And as soon as I made the decision to get out of debt, here are some of the changes that I made. First, I bumped up my monthly payments to around $800 
a month. Now this was a lot more than the required minimum payment and actually it was a lot more than I was comfortable with. But around the same time, I also started a side hustle on Airbnb. So my roommate and I, we put up a temporary wall in our living room, we converted it into a third bedroom and we rented that out for $70 a night. And by the way, if you're living in New York City, which I'm not anymore, but I used to, putting up a temporary wall in your living room and making that into a bedroom is kind of like a lot of people do that because apartments are so expensive. So we did that, um, had the side hustle going on Airbnb, we would split our profits 50-50, and everything I made from that, I put towards student loans. So that really helped a lot. I think that's key to start a side hustle to help you put extra towards your loans. In addition to that side hustle, whenever I got a windfall of money, I just put it all towards paying off my loans. So during my debt-free journey, which started at age 25, I had five big windfalls that I can remember. So there was a in year two, a tax refund of $10,000, which normally I don't get. So as soon as I got that tax refund, straight towards student loans, I also in year two got two performance-based bonuses at work, one for $15,000 and another one for $8,000. And in year three, I got another bonus of $12,000. And then in year five, I got a wedding gift from my parents of $10,000. Look, I know that not everyone gets windfalls of money like this, but I want to point out that my base pay without the performance-based bonuses was actually quite low. So these bonuses were a big part of my overall pay. But I learned to live on just my base pay, which was very lean, so that that way any bonuses I got were like surprise free money that could just go straight towards debt. Now, regardless of what kind of job you have, you may or may not get bonuses from your job, but everyone has moments when you just kind of come upon money that you weren't necessarily expecting. So this could be something like birthday money, a pay raise, or even just money that you found in your pocket somewhere. Like I love when that happens when you find something out of the laundry and like a bunch of dollar bills in your pocket. So once you make that commitment to become debt free, I guarantee you there will be occasions when money you weren't expecting comes into your orbit. Before I started my debt free journey, whenever I got a bonus or a windfall of some kind, I used to just spend it all as fast as I could. And I remember the first time I ever got paid a bonus when I turned 24 and um, I went on a trip to Miami, I spent $300 on shoes and basically blew the rest on stuff. I don't even know what. So for you, I want you to make the decision now to put away any and all unexpected windfalls of money from here on out, however small, and put it towards getting out of debt. And look, it wasn't like I was miserable this whole time because I was just putting everything I made towards debt. I actually still managed to have fun. Like, I just wasn't reckless with my spending, but I still managed to allocate some money towards doing fun things like going to Burning Man three years in a row, taking dance classes, um, going to Las Vegas with my friends. So I could still have fun. It's just that I cut out things that I really could do without that I used to be more mindless about. So things like getting manicures and pedicures every two weeks getting eyelash extensions all the time, walking into clothing stores and randomly walking out with $200 of like clothing, just stuff like that. Ta instead of taking Ubers, I would take the subway. So I was just more careful about my money. I don't recall that my lifestyle changed drastically. I think I just got more focused. Okay, so enough about me. That's basically how I did it. Now let's talk about you. I hope that from my story, you got that not only does every dollar count, every windfall of money, every extra amount that you put towards your student loans. But I also hope that you got that if I can do it in six years and I got a late start, then you can do it too. And $100,000 is a lot. I mean, most people have a lot less than that in student loans when they graduate. So definitely if I can do it, you can do it. In fact, it may be kind of hard for you to wrap your head around how fast you can actually get debt free. So let's run some numbers so that you really get it. Okay, so the best way to really get a handle on your student loan numbers, as well as the timeline it'll take for you to become debt-free, is to use a calculator such as the one on bankrate.com. So just Google bankrate student loan calculator and it will take you to this page, but this is a really awesome tool and this is how you use it. Let's just say that, for example, your loan amount is 30,000 which is kind of the national average of uh, what most student loans are. And the loan term, they usually range from 10 to 25 years. So why don't we put 10 years in there? And assuming a 6% rate, these are the, the terms of your loan, then you will probably have around a $333 monthly payment. 
Now, what is cool is I really want you to see, um, so expand this amortization schedule so that we can see it. And this will show you every month when you make a payment, how much of that payment is going towards principal versus towards interest. And then also how your balance is going down over time. As you see, the balance goes down every month so that you know in 2023, you've got $23,000 and then your balance goes down and down and down and down until in 2030, 10 years later, your balance has gone to zero. And notice by then, most of your $333 payment is actually going mostly towards principal and only a little bit towards interest. So that's how amortization on loans work. This is also how mortgages on your house work also. But student loans, um, they, they amortize, meaning your monthly payment, some of it goes towards principal, some of it goes towards interest, and your balance goes down gradually. But as time goes by, because the interest is gonna be lower since your balance is also lower, then as time goes by, more and more of your monthly payment goes towards principal versus interest. So as you can see here, it's more, um, more principal here than it is interest until finally it's almost all of your monthly payment is going towards principal versus interest. So that's how an amortization schedule works. And what is very cool about this is you can also see if you add extra payments, so go to this little window here but if you add extra payments you can see if you add a hundred dollars to your monthly payment meaning instead of the 333 that you're paying a month if you increase that you bump it up to 433 dollars just by adding a hundred then you can see how much quicker you're going to finish paying off your loan so right now as is you would have your student loan paid off by june 2030 and they actually say it right here your estimated payoff it, date is June 2030, but if you add 100 to your payment, then you can calculate and see what that will do for you. And as you can see, it accelerates your payoff date from June 2030 to August 2027. So that's three years. Just by adding $100 extra, you can accelerate your payoff timeline by three years. So I think that's very, very powerful because the thing about the way debt payoff works is every time you add a little extra to your monthly payment, even just $100, that has this double whammy effect of number one, increasing your payment so that more of that payment can go towards principal and not just interest. And then that also reduces the interest expense in future months since your balance will be lower, which means more of your payments can go towards principal since the interest expense is not as much. And then of course, this extra $100, it always goes straight towards principal. So never underestimate how much a small difference that you add to your monthly payment, how much that can really affect your debt-free date. So even if you make it just $50, then you can still accelerate it by almost two years. So actually a little, a little less than two years, about a year and a half. So that's a lot just by adding $50. And I think most of us can handle 50. I'm gonna encourage you to add 100 to your monthly payment but whatever you can handle. So now let's say you add $100 to your monthly payment and you add some windfalls along the way as a one-time lump sum payment. Maybe you get a bonus at work or you get some birthday money. So let's say um, about a year later, you come up with $1,000 and you decide to pay that. So June, July, 2021, you apply that, then you've accelerated by a couple of months. So if you can just put a couple of one-time payments here and there to accelerate your payoff date by a couple of months and increase your monthly payment, you can finish paying off your student loans a lot faster than you think. And I really want you to play around with these numbers and really get it and see how small differences, small amounts of money make a huge difference in when you can become debt-free. Because I think when you have a big burden and you know that you owe a lot of money, it might seem like it's such a big chunk of money that nothing you ever do will ever make it go away. But I really want you to use this calculator and see for yourself how you can actually make this happen. And it's not gonna be that hard. So again, it's bankrate.com, check it out. I want you to understand your numbers and be precise about this, you know? Don't be vague that you're, go you're going to pay off your loan someday. Really crunch the numbers and see when you can make this happen. After you run your numbers in the calculator, I want you to do these four things. First, increase whatever your monthly payment is right now by $100. This is something most everyone can do right away just by cutting your expenses a little elsewhere. I mean, unless you're a single mom and money is really tight, in which case, hats off to you because single moms are amazing. 
But otherwise, I'm pretty sure everyone can find a way to redirect $100 of spending to your student loans instead. It might mean packing lunch once in a while or canceling that gym membership you never use. I'm certainly guilty of that or whatever. If you're feeling any resistance to this, remember what I showed you with the calculator. Increasing your payments by just $100 a month shaves three years off your student loans. So what is it worth to you to become debt free three years sooner? Three years, that's a long time. Secondly, if you haven't already, I want you to log into your student loan account and sign up for auto pay. So increase your payment by 100 and then put that on auto pay. That way you don't have to rely on your memory and willpower to achieve your financial goals. You wanna just put a stake in the ground and put it on autopilot. Not only this, but a lot of student loan providers or servicers, they offer up to a 0.25% discount on your interest if you put it on auto pay. So do yourself a favor and automate your payments if you haven't already. Thirdly, I want you to start a side hustle. Then when you start making money with that side hustle, all of it is gonna be straight towards your student loan. There are so many good ways to earn extra money on your own schedule. You can sell your services on apps like Fiverr and Upwork. You can become an Airbnb host like I did. You can become a driver for Uber on the weekends sell old stuff on Poshmark, you can become a dog walker on Rover, or do deliveries for Postmates or Instacart. But bottom line is, no excuses. Make sure you watch this video right here for some more ideas on side hustles that you can do, even from home. But basically, there is definitely something you can do to supplement your income. Because if you wanna get out of debt, but money is tight, what else are you going to do? So with the gig economy and all these apps out there, there's absolutely something you can do with skills and interests that you already have. So you have to get resourceful, scrappy, really like make an effort. Nobody's gonna make this happen for you, but you. So I know you can do it. Just get yourself a side hustle so you can have more money to get out of debt faster. And last but not least, Whenever you get a windfall of money, like a bonus at work or birthday money, wedding money, a pay raise, any unexpected lump sum of money that you get, make sure to put it straight towards student loans. I know it's a little too easy sometimes to just blow that money on a splurge or to treat yourself and justify it that way. So if you ever feel tempted to blow that money on something else instead, I want you to go back to that calculator that we looked at and look at exactly how many months that money would accelerate your debt-free date. Remember, $1,000 that you put just randomly extra towards your debt speeds up your debt-free date by as much as five months or more. So I think that should make you think about it twice. Look, getting out of debt is not gonna be easy, but becoming debt-free is definitely a journey and something you have to commit to and be very focused on but I really hope that you make that decision for yourself today to get out of debt sooner than you ever thought possible because man, it feels awesome. All of a sudden I've got all this extra money every month to put purely towards investing now instead of student loans and it feels really great. Like this huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders and also I am the first person in my family to become debt free, so it feels pretty awesome to set a new precedent. The way I think about it, your money is going to go somewhere. Every dollar you make is going to go to your landlord, to the government for taxes, to Uber, to Amazon, to Nordstrom, to Visa, to MasterCard, to American Express. Your money is going to go somewhere, so might as well be intentional about it and have a good chunk of it go towards your student loans so you can become debt free one day. And of course, in addition to that, you also want for some of that money to go towards savings and investments. That's a different subject story for another day. So there are no shortcuts to becoming debt free. Yes, you'll probably have to change your spending habits. You may have to start a side hustle. And yes, you may have to face the truth of your situation. But personally, if it weren't for my struggle with student loans, I don't think I ever would have hit financial rock bottom like I did and had that powerful urge to turn my life around and start doing better for myself and my money. The day I started my debt-free journey is the day I started getting super savvy about my money, about personal finance and investing. And now here I am today on YouTube sharing everything I learned and marking my debt-free date milestone with you today with this video. So if you do have a lot of student loan debt, it really can make you stronger and smarter if you approach it the right way. Cause it's gonna take so much focus and dedication to get out of debt. 
So you will definitely become a stronger, more focused, more committed person as a result. And personally, other than actually becoming debt free, I think that's the real reward. So that's been my personal experience and I really hope you will go on this journey with me and keep me posted. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for spending this time with me today. I know there's a million other things you could be doing with your time, plus plenty of other YouTubers you could be watching instead. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week, same time, same place. Bye.